Welcome back everybody to Forza Horizon 4 and uh, yeah we're doing another uh, seasonal championship in the form of an old hand where we'll uh, be going around in vintage racing cars and uh, yeah once again we get in there in this Bentley which I do not think I'm ever going to tire of driving because yeah it's just the ultimate kind of car as far as I'm concerned in, uh, in ways that I uh, look for in a car so uh, yeah, I think this is going to be my uh, new go-to car just to drive around and do these kind of things with. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, see what kind of cars we're going to be getting in. I've heard a lot of good things about this autumn championship. Suppose I'll be hearing more now that I know you've signed up. So yeah, lots of classic races here. So we've got a 1934 Alfa Romeo P3, 1939 Auto Union Type D, now known as uh, Audi. Um, Maserati 8 CTF from 1939, Mercedes-Benz W154 also from 1939 and a Napier Railton which is actually the reward car for uh, doing this seasonal championship but as you can see I've already got it because I uh, did it in another festival championship I think or 50% or whatever it was but uh, yeah the only change I've done to this Napier Railton is upgraded the brakes because in stock form it only has brakes in the rear and rear brakes only in a car from 1933 do not offer the kind of braking that is necessary for a car that has that level of horsepower and torque from a uh, World War One ish era well 1930s era uh, airplane engine as well at 24 litres so uh, yeah I think we're getting the Napier Railton first purely because it's just an insane car with such a large engine and far more torque than any car would have until you know recently with the likes of the Bugatti Devo, uh, or even, I think it's even more torque than a uh, Bugatti Veyron, so, uh, yeah, huge amount of torque in a car as old as this. The only uh, other additions that are given to these cars are headlights and uh, braking lights, because obviously they never had them originally, and as you can see, we're racing at night time, and uh, yeah, it's fairly impossible to drive around without being able to see if someone's stopping in front of you, or obviously where you're going. Being an aircraft engine, as you can see, it doesn't rev high at all. Not even 3,000 RPM. It's got lots and lots of speed on the go. It just takes a fair old time to get there. Lots of low end grunt on this vehicle. Despite the size of it, because obviously it's so low revving, it's not all that loud either. Ooh, another fellow Napier Railton there, struggling to get around a corner. Yeah, these aren't the easiest of vehicles to drive, which is why I uh, gave myself this slight addition of extra braking, because I've tried to stop one of these at it's top speed and yeah it takes forever and I think this is actually the first time I've raced this on the video on this channel so I figured I'd give it a go take a while for it to just stretch its legs but once it does it's a, uh, a rocket ship pretty much. Surprised we we're in third place to be honest because this is not the, uh, like I said, the easiest of vehicles to drive. It will uh, certainly have more success if we don't get up to the lead position in one of the other kind of cars. That torque just comes on at no RPM whatsoever and it just wants to step the rear end now. Can't imagine how unnerving this car would have been to have driven back in the day.
But in terms of top speed, it's not all that quick. Because aerodynamically, it's not that great. And I think it only has three gears. But you certainly struggle to find a car with more horsepower than this. And you certainly wouldn't find a car with more torque than this. And that's what's helped us win the day, surprisingly. Not by much, as you can see, there's less than half a... Well, just over half a second. No, not even half a second between us. Between us and the Alfa Romeo P3, which is about the same age as this. And then the Mercedes-Benz and the Maserati, which are both newer. Though only by about six years. So, uh, yeah, no, let's, let's get on to the next race and see what a, uh, another classic racer can do. Right, so the Napier Railton standing us in good stead there, but uh, yeah, it's a bit of an unwieldy beast and uh, really rather quite large. So uh, yeah, I think we'll go for the. Uh, hmm, I'm struggling between the Mercedes or the uh, Maserati. The Mercedes is technically quicker, as you can see, in terms of top speed and acceleration, but the Maserati is better in terms of handling and braking while also having a supercharger, so it's a. Uh, pretty much always got its power on the go even if it is less in the way of power but as you can see it's also significantly less in terms of weight as well but then the Mercedes is better balanced the uh, I think the Alfa Romeo is a bit too old without really having any power going for it so uh, yeah I think we'll go for the Maserati we'll probably go for the Mercedes in the final race I don't think I've actually used that before yeah, I love this Maserati. It's a straight 8 supercharged engine. Do not see straight 8s anymore, which is a bit of a shame because it makes some really rather fantastic noises. But yeah, they generally take up far too much room up front to be uh, really any use these days. And in the inline in in 6 takes up enough room as it is, so. Uh, yeah, adding another couple of cylinders onto that. And uh, yeah, most cars would not be able to accommodate them. Whoa, big crash. Bit of a problem with these street races is that the uh, AI can get a bit confused with the uh, normal traffic AI. Never mind the fact that normal traffic AI are uh, usually on the driving line as well which is not helpful now that auto union that we just passed there is uh, incredibly quick in terms of top speed it can do more than 220 miles an hour which is ballistic in terms of top speed in today never mind back in the 1930s reason it didn't count as fast as a production car was because it wasn't a production car. It was a racer, so uh, that's why it really didn't count. Yeah, again, imagine doing more than 200 mile an hour in the 1930s. No seat belts, no real crash safety at all. And you're on old age suspension technology. That would be terrifying. since these kind of cars do like to oversteer a fair bit because there's really no weight to them and then you've got these really rather thin tyres which do not have the kind of grip of modern tyres and then the fact that the suspension isn't independent so what one rear wheel does the other one does and yeah it's no surprise that plenty of people crashed these things and died that the Alfa Romeo is uh, keeping up to be honest it's not got the most power that uh, of, uh, of the cars that we have to choose from 
but I guess that might make it a bit more controllable, but we still go for the win nonetheless. We're 20 points in the bag, and now we're 14 points ahead of an Alfa Romeo, and 16 points ahead of the Auto Union, and uh, yeah. Lacks of a Napier Railton is all the way down in 7th, so uh, yeah. Nonetheless, let's get on to the uh, final race. Right, so we're going to try out the Mercedes. I know this Alfa Romeo is fairly sharpish, but yeah, so is the uh, Mercedes, and uh, yeah, it's got better handling. Slightly worse in the way of brakes, but I think that's purely because this Alfa Romeo doesn't weigh anything. And they're still both bang on 50-50 weight distribution. Uh, I don't think the... Uh, even though the Auto Union is quicker, I think it's just got a bit too much in the way of power. And even the braking on that isn't any better anyway. So, uh, yeah. And as you can see, weight is a lot better on the Mercedes. And I know the power in terms of horsepower is only slight in terms of difference. But as you can see, the torque is significantly more as well. And torque on these cars is a killer. As the... Uh, Napier Railton proved uh, it was so easy to just step that car out, no matter what. So, uh, yeah, see what this Mercedes can do without the uh, obvious addition of headlights that you have to put on this car to uh, make it usable in a free roam environment. I think this Mercedes actually is fairly decent in terms of looks, which you can't really say about these cars because they are just a body with an engine and some wheels on them, but I do think the Mercedes is really rather quite sleek. But let's see what it can do in terms of performance. Well, brakes didn't really work there. As you can see, the front wheels on this car are actually cambered. Which isn't something that's obviously near all that noticeable on other vehicles on this game. Brakes or lack thereof. Yeah, braking on these cars is difficult to gauge, really. I guess best policy really is just to slam on and hope that you stop. <laughs> yeah, the uh, Alfa Romeo seems to have better braking there. Again, probably because it weighs so much less than this. And also, probably isn't going quite as quick owing to the uh, massive difference in horsepower. Oh, some people have had an accident there. Well, be an idiot to not take advantage. Who's in front? I think it's now the auto union. Yeah, we're not going to catch up to that thing with these uh, final bits. It's a monster in terms of speed, that thing. And we're completely useless in terms of braking, it seems. Or I'm just useless at gauging how to much braking force is needed, but either way, we're well, gonna looking like we're gonna have to settle for a second place here.
very nearly lost our second place though, but yeah, second is all we really need. Any higher and we'll just be uh, adding extra points on for no reason. But yeah, Auto Union now in first, no surprise, it got ahead of us at the end there because it is a ludicrously quick car once you get the uh, room to be s as quick as possible. But yeah, we uh, win nonetheless by a wide margin, which this is the first in a while, I think. But uh, yeah, nonetheless, a uh, yeah, fun uh, racing championship there. Especially since we don't often get to use these uh, classic races, which I really, really like the addition of on this game. Obviously, we even have some older ones. Uh, I think we saw a Bugatti uh, Type C in the previous race at some point, which is from the 1920s. And obviously, we've also got Mercedes Benz from the 1920s as well. So yeah, I uh, do hope that we get more of these uh, classic 1920s, 1930s cars. Hopefully some more ordinary vehicles rather than, you know, just racing cars. But either way, it is great to have them on the game. And uh, yeah, they are really, really rather fun. So uh, yeah, get out there and try them if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.